Hi everyone and welcome to Asamu Rat Care. So today's video is um, featuring a special guest who's trying to escape. Yes, I can see you. This is Arcana. Um, she's currently staying here on holiday and um, this video is going to be all about head tilts in rats. And as you can see, um, Arcana is modelling this very, very well at the moment. So, first thing to notice, let's move some of her um, distraction objects out of the way a bit, is you can see straight away, come here Arcana, turn around, no that's the wrong way, face the camera. So you can see straight away her head is at quite a jaunty angle here and actually her whole body is listing over to one side so you can see she's kind of physically over like this. Um, now this is something that does happen quite regularly in rats and um, it is normally, and I will say normally because there are some exceptions to this rule, it is normally um, a kind of an inner ear infection. So inner ear we've got the outer ear which is the obvious stuff on the rat. We've got the middle ear, which is inside the ear, but it's usually something that has access to the outside. So if you look right inside the ear hole, and then there's the inner ear, which is parts that we cannot see. And, and actually there's no way of seeing that effectively in a rat. Um, you can't just stick a little kind of scope down there and look at it. That would only show you the middle ear. The inner ear is behind the eardrum. So what can happen um, in rats and humans, actually, I personally have had an inner ear infection. It's horrible. Um, is they can get this inner ear infection and basically it messes with your balance centre of your brain and it basically makes them go a little bit weird. So Arcana here is um, a rat that has had in the past an inner ear infection. Um, you can, it, it affects her in quite a lot of different ways. Um, the most obvious is the kind of physical tilt but when she doesn't feel kind of secure or she doesn't feel the ground then she will start to slightly roll. Um, she might do it in my hands a little bit, but I think um, she's probably recovered enough that it's not a big deal. You, you straight away see her um, kind of twisted neck. Sometimes it's actually called wry neck in animals. Um, I will say with Arcana, um, this is what we call a residual tilt. So you have um, the active inner ear infection, which causes the initial hip tilt. And normally what will happen is something um, to this level will come on, come on over a few days so you may notice them slightly leaning to one side slightly twisting their head and then gradually it will get worse um, you'll treat it and in some cases they'll be left with a residual head tilt like okay here you miss um, but that really does depend on how fast you treat it how well you treat it and how lucky you are they're in a great degree of luck in this because um, Arcana got treated straight away with all the right medication and she's still got a residual head tilt. So, inner ear infections. In, inside your ear, it's, massive, it's one of the massive components of balance in the brain centre. Um, I know quite a bit about this because, like I say, I suffered from labyrinthitis when I was, um, probably, it must be about 10, 15 years ago, something like that. Around about when I got married, it was fun. Um, but yes, so basically, when you wipe out the inner ear, you're suddenly reliant on only two two forms of kind of balance. So you're relying on your contact with the floor, which Arcane is demonstrating very well here as she's walking around, and you're also reliant on sight. Now rats do do kind of use their sight to an extent, but not to the same extent that we do as humans. So a lot of what Arcana is doing is relying on this sense of touch with the ground, which means when she doesn't have a good sense of touch with the ground, she has less ability to kind of um, control herself and know which way is the right way around so that's where where they can sometimes roll um, so what do you do to treat uh, inner ear infections and that is if it is an inner ear infection i should say actually inner ear infections are much more common in younger rats and um, you can get them in older rats as well um, but the other co potential causes of head tilts which are typically strokes um, neurological conditions like um, a brain tumor or a brain infection etc um, they're more, far more common in older rats. So if you've got a younger rat with a head tilt, it's almost always um, an ear infection. Um, one thing to also say, I mentioned about middle ear. Now, if you can smell something coming from that ear, um, a middle ear infection can also actually cause this kind of head tilt and balance problems, at least in humans, and, and it does in rats as well to some extent. Though quite often you'll get the smell and have no impact on the balance centres. Um, so you may not see the head tilt, but it's always worth, if you've got a rat with a head tilt, have a good sniff around the ears. If one smells different, yes, I can see you, Missy. Yeah, if one smells different, then um, it is potentially um, an ear infection. I should mention, by the way, our Kana is actually Mog's sister, <laughs> um, her little top-eared sister. She's um, come to visit and stay. I've got my, all of the Lovecraft rats in my rat room at the moment. There's a, a, quite a few rats in here. <laughs> 
Um, but yes, um, so middle ear infection can also cause the same symptoms, but you can smell the difference. And actually that's very similar treatment in the main, but you also need, need ear drops too. So to treat an inner ear infection, what you're looking at is um, basically an antibiotic. Batril is a very good one for this um, because it's quite often um, linked with the bacteria myco, which you'll be familiar with from a respiratory point of view, but actually that bacteria can cause problems elsewhere. Also can cause pyo, that's an interesting thing. I really should do one on pyo at some point. But yes, so my, my, myco being is quite often involved, so um, batril is a good choice. Um, in some cases, I've had one or two rats that after a few days are still not picking up particularly well and actually adding in something like Coamox, which is a nice broad spectrum antibiotic, Sinulux or, or, no, Sinulux or um, Claviceptin or Novoclav and um, Penicillin effectively, are some of the brand names of that. Um, they can really help in that kind of situation. But the other important thing as well as the antibiotic is to get a very good anti-inflammatory and the best option for this is actually um, steroids, so something like um, PRED or um, similar kind of steroids. Um, the reason we would choose steroids, steroids can be good and bad. What they can do is lower the immune system, but what they do do very effectively is reduce in inflammation. So if you can hit it, in, it only needs to be for about the first week, um, if you can hit it early and fast with the steroids, you minimise the chance of this residual head tilt that um, Arcana is demonstrating very well at the moment. Are you okay, Missy? Are you settling down? Um, yes, so you, you can kind of minimise the impact of this. However, the antibiotics need to be kept on for a lot longer. So what some people would say as soon as the symptoms stop, stop it, or do it for 10 days, or do it for two weeks, um, the problem with inner ear infections is so deep inside you can't really monitor it very well. So it's generally a good rule of thumb to do the antibiotics for at least three weeks. Um, give it that three week blob. You may still be left with a rat that's tilty at the end of it, but you know you've given the antibiotics the kind of full chance to work. Um, so what you're left with is probably just a permanent head tilt um, like it's going on here. So that's a starting point. What you may also find with rats with a head tilt is they actually start losing a bit of weight, getting a little bit skinny. It's an infection. This is quite a common symptom of infection. So they can sometimes benefit from a bit of extra nutrition and um, kind of wet meals or extra food or a bit of time with extras. Um, I think what it can also do as well is some rats that um, have had head tilts start displaying slightly strange behavior afterwards, um, almost frantic. Um, slightly what I would describe as neurological symptoms though not a symptom of um, kind of like a, a pituitary tumour or a brain tumour or anything they're just slightly strange behaviours um, they, they operate in a different world in a lot of respects um, having suffered from labyrinthitis I can fully understand this um, I had it for about six weeks and I felt like I was living in a strange bubble um, because you don't relate to the um, outside world in the way that you used to and I think it does affect rats in that way it's something that they can get over or they can continue to display those behaviours long after they've got rid of um, any head tilt uh, it, it's, quite, um, it's quite a strange one but you do see it However, generally speaking, a rat that's had a head tilt and been properly treated will go on to live a perfectly happy life, um, kind of be very active and um, be able to get around the cage perfectly fine. So our cana here is um, very capable. You've seen her um, climbing up and around um, on the kind of branch and such today. She's in a full, full sized kind of big cage um, with plenty of space for her to climb and do things. And it doesn't... Yes, I do. Uh, it doesn't daunt her at all, um, and you can see she's perfectly happy um, coming up to me and interacting with me as well. So it's just something that, particularly if you've got a residual help, head tilt, you have to deal with. But what is very true is for the first probably few months, um, or as long as they've got the head tilt, at least initially, they will struggle a little bit to get around. Um, as I say, their balance is thrown, so one thing you're going to have to be very careful of is make sure there's plenty of places to catch them in the cage. So what I would call catch hammocks, put, put lots of hammocks across at different levels. So if they do fall, and they probably will fall, they've got stuff to land on and that's safe and they're not gonna injure themselves. Um, particularly in those first few weeks when they're not used to it. When you get to kind of Arcana's level, she's been for, for quite a few months now since she got her initial infection. Um, she's very capable and she's a lot more used to things and you don't have to do as much to the cage anymore. Um, but it's one that you definitely do need to bear in mind when you're thinking about rats with head tilts. Hey babes. Um, so those are probably the main points. Um, what you will find, even with rats left with residual head tilts, is over 
quite a series of months they, they may gradually improve. Um, I've had one that had a head tilt for probably about a year and um, it did gradually improve to the point, you could still see it was there but it was a lot less pronounced. Arcanus is quite a pronounced one. Um, they can get worse than hers, they can get to the point where the rat can't stand up. Um, that can be very distressing for them. Um, and it's something that in that kind of situation you put them in a small low level cage, at least initially, with quite secure footing. Um, you don't want them to be climbing because they, they'll start panicking. Um, so kind of safe ground based, kind of like little igloos, that kind of thing, um, is safer for them when they're at kind of really extreme. But that should improve. You, you don't tend to see a rat um, get that level of head tilt um, kind of long term. And if you do, you, you genuinely honestly have to think about um, quality of life in that situation. Right, so um, other things to think about with a head tilt. Um, so if you have got an older rat and you're trying to work out is this an ear infection or not, um, one thing I will say, so strokes, um, neurological conditions, brain tumours and such, the way you would treat them normally is actually with steroids, um, which is part of the treatment for um, a head tilt. So what it's worth doing is treating it as an ear infection, so treating it with the antibiotics and the steroids to start off with and see how they go. Though I will say a stroke tends to come, come on very quickly that, and it's actually rather than a, a tilt as such, it's a one-sided weakness which can cause them to list to one side. So they're not um, dizzy or unbalanced, they are weak on one side and that's because of the way strokes happen, it affects one side of the brain. Um, with something like a pituitary tumour or another kind of neurological brain tumour type thing, it will generally come on gradually. Um, a head tilt ear infection um, based one will generally come on over, I would say, probably two to three days. So you'll start noticing a slight tilt and actually you can come on within that day and suddenly they've got quite an angle on them. Um, we see it occasionally at rat shows, you'll get a rat that comes in and at the start of the day you can just start seeing it kind of slightly to one side and then by the time um, you've got the owner to get them to the vets it's become quite pronounced. Um, so that's one to bear in mind. So it isn't instant like you would expect a stroke or something to be. It isn't over a number of weeks like you'd expect a brain tumour to be. It's over a few days typically before it gets kind of quite pronounced. Um, and you do often get kind of a, a general not quite rightness about the rat, you know, they're just feeling a bit under the weather, etc. Um, probably because they're feeling quite strange from being tilted over. So those are the main things on um, head tilts and ear infections in particular. Um, I think that's probably <laughs> over and out from me and Arcana, who's an absolute sweetheart, aren't you babes? Yes, I do love you. Yes, I do. Um, so um, I will go and enjoy my holiday guests a little bit. Um, um, bye from me for now. <laughs>